Michael Dana, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. And uh, congratulations on your Academy Award nominations. Thank you very much. Uh, so I want to start out just by talking about, uh, you know, what phase of production do you come into? Are you there from the very beginning coming up with ideas or do you just come in as soon as the film is finished and ready to be scored? Well, the typical thing for a composer is to, is to be um, at the very end of the process. So one, after shooting, after uh, usually during the editing process, so maybe when there's two months left of the editing is usually when uh, the composer gets brought in. So then composers shown uh, the state of the picture at that moment and then uh, comes on and starts working the director. But for Life of Pi, um, it was it was quite different just because, well, f partly because Aang and I have worked together and we've known each other uh, quite well for 15 years. So as soon as he, as soon as this property came to him, he, he got on the phone with me and uh, said, you know, got this book, uh, Life of Pi, kind of made for you. You're Canadian. It's Canadian. <laughs> Uh, you're married to an Indian woman, you go to India all the time, well, we need Indian music, and um, so that was probably four and a half years ago that that call happened, and uh, we, r right from that time, we started talking about it, at least the concepts and the themes of the story that he wanted to tell, not so much about the music, although, because we hadn't, of course, there was no imagery to to kind of be inspired by and and, and to react to, but at that at that time we certainly knew we needed you know big orchestra and a choir and lots of instruments from around the world which obviously is something I've done a lot of and and uh, so yeah the discussion began you know for over a matter of years you know I might not hear from him for a month or two but then he'd call me up in the middle of the night and just say okay I've been thinking about this and you know so I have pages and pages of notes over that time and then once I started seeing footage which was um, the the fall of 2011. Um, I started I started working with him, and we started to actually talk about music. And then in by December, I was in Bombay, India, writing the song with with uh, Jayashree, the singer. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about uh, the importance of music in uh, helping to create a mood or complement the images and, and in a sense to help tell the story of the movie well I think you know it, music in a film uh, is different for every project obviously the, the the specific story that you're telling is kind of a puzzle that needs to be solved um, in a collaboration with the the director and the composer and figure out what it is that the, the, the music can how the music can help to tell the story um, I think um, you know on on life of Pi those discussions um, began fairly early as I said but they they certainly in the we worked on this for for probably a year in, um, to closely on the music and and in fact for the last four months I was in in Los Angeles on the Fox lot itself and and a hundred yards away from Aang so Every shot, as the visual effects shots were coming in, he would he would literally could bring them over and discuss them with me, and then we could react immediately and 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 give him music, and then he could take it back to the editing room, try it there, and then walk over mm -hmm. and you know talk about it from there. So it was that kind of a fluid um, collaboration in that way. Mm -hmm. So tell me uh, how your ideas start. Uh, I guess for for medleys or, or themes, uh, you know, after you've seen the film, uh, you know, what next? How do you take that first step? Well, you know, obviously uh, there's a lot of talking with the director, and and you know, the composer's job is to is to be the musical arm of the storytelling, and so you need to understand the story the way the director does. You need to get crawl right inside his vision and his his um, the, the, what it is that he wants to 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 say about the this story and how he wants to tell it 
So it's really, there's, there's a lot of steps before actually writing music of just kind of getting to know the director and getting to understand what it, what it is that they want to do here and say here. So, but then at, at some point, you know, you start to get specific about scenes and say, okay, well, this scene, this is, you know, how we're going to, going to approach it. And then you, you, generally what happens nowadays is that you, you have a, a studio that's a, a kind of a, a place where you can make a, a mock-up orchestra or whatever the, the forces are that you're writing for. But let's say it's mm -hmm. orchestra. Um, you, you can mock it up with a synthesize um, on, a, on a computer uh, in synchronization with the picture. And then the director comes over and can listen to the, you know, the pretend orchestra play, play the piece underneath the scene. And then you can discuss from there, well, this is, you know, yeah, I like this, but this needs to be more dramatic, this needs to be louder, softer, you know, whatever it may be. And then you just keep molding it and molding it until it's finally finished. You both agree this is where, it, this is what we want to do. And then you, um, you know, you take all that, that mock-up orchestra and you, you have it all printed up for, for a real orchestra, if that's what it is. They and then they play it, and then that's what you that's your final score. So mm -hmm. that's sort of the that's kind of the 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 way that it it runs through. And when you when you're working with non non Western instruments, it gets a little more complicated because obviously a lot of those players don't read Western notation, and a lot of them are very difficult to mock up in it with a synthesizer, or there may not be a pretend. Uh, Persian nay, really, and really there isn't. You know, the Persian woodwind that we use in Life of Pi, and we usually hear for Richard Parker, the tiger. But there's no, there isn't really any way to mock that up. So on with instruments like that, I often record them early, um, and then just kind of edit them and and modulate them and and um, use whatever means I need to to kind of get it get what we need and then that almost that's pretty much the finished product right from that early part of the of the process mm -hmm. so uh, let's let's talk a bit about uh, where uh, you drew influence from or where some of your ideas for the score for life of Pi came from right well Pi Patel is a you know he's a he's a boy an Indian boy born in India, but born in a French colonial town, born in a in a in a town where they speak Tamil, they speak uh, French, they eat you know South Indian curry, but they also eat croissant. So it's it's kind of he's born into this place that already there's a sense of East and West. So we knew we knew the score would would have elements of both those things in it. Um, we. So even from the beginning of the film, we we hear uh, French accordions playing Indian melodies, and we hear um, you know Indian sitars playing French melodies. So it, we try and mix it up as much as possible, and just blur those borders as much as possible. And 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 like Pai Patel himself, he he's a he's a person that doesn't doesn't see anything foreign about um, foreign cultures or, or alien about different religions. To him they're all different ways of looking at the same thing and, and they all have an appeal to him and they all have a something um, that he can take from it and they're all, they're, they're all a beautiful kind of part of, of living and so this is something that, that inspires the score. That's, that's why um, we have all these different um, influences from from you know India and and Balinese gamelan and uh, and and all these all these instruments and choirs from from around the world um, all of just like Pai Patel it, it's a very international way of looking at at life mm -hmm. uh, and as far as uh, using a score using music to I guess tell the story or uh, you know express certain parts of say for instance uh, you know with the relationship of the boy and the tiger using music to sort of I guess complement and chart the development of that relationship uh, 
Could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, well, definitely, you know, and when I when I write a score, I generally start at the beginning and and work through to the end because just like the characters themselves, the the musical themes kind of go undergo changes and maturity and and uh go through, you know, they morph into different things by by the end of the of the of the film. So, um that's really the the essence of of what you're doing. You you know, you track the the development and the relationships of 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 these characters, and certainly, um, Pi and Richard Parker, you know, are a very uh, you know an, an, an unusual and challenging relationship because mostly because we're not really sure what Richard Parker is or what he symbolizes or what his, what the meaning is. Um, mm -hmm. Is he? Is he like Pi's father says, just a reflection of you? Uh, when you look in his eyes, is it just your own soul looking back? Is it uh, is it God? Is it um, is it a tiger? Is it you know? So the the way we wanted to address that musically was to leave a certain um, and and by the way, and the film doesn't answer that question. Um, the, the the audience needs to, and that's what's kind of special about this film is that the audience needs to be very involved in in the plot in a sense because we we give you possibilities, but there's no there's no answers here. Um, it's really uh, something that 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 there's no right and wrong, and and so certainly with the with what Richard Parker is, we we decided to use the Persian ney, which is an instrument that is probably eighty percent just the sound of air. It, it has a it has an unsure substance to it, and it has a a kind of um, ghostly quality to it. So that was an instrument that just seemed to be the right choice for for that character. Mm -hmm. Now you're a uh, you're a double nominee this year for both best score and best song. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the song uh, "Pies Lullaby," where that came from? And uh... sure, definitely. Well, the 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 song you know, Ang Ang wanted to begin the film um, in this kind of beautiful child's paradise, and in a way, um, it, it's almost the the older pies projection or memory or romanticized memory of what childhood was so it had to be something that was just that you know this opening is beautiful visually it the beautiful animals and it's very safe and um, secure it's literally in a zoo behind walls uh, with beautiful animals and birds and it's warm and there's you know it's just everything a child could could need including you know parental love and and um, and and just that feeling of safety, and that's and that's why we thought that a lullaby would be a wonderful way of kind of a shorthand way of of you know giving him all that, just that sense of of a mother's love and and um, and a deep connection to his family. And of course, he's about to lose all that. We're about to take it all away from him. Mm -hmm. So it's important to really establish what it meant to him, and and so we. Because it's a uh, because he's in South India, the language there is Tamil. So I wanted to use a South Indian singer, a Carnatic um, tradition, traditional singer, and I knew uh, Bombay Jayashree's work from. I mean, she's done filmy work. She's done film. She's had hits, you know, like popular hits. Mm -hmm. But she's also a really just badass classical singer. Um, she's really a man. That's probably not a term that she would probably use for herself, but um, it, she's she's incredible. And and so I wanted, you know, I wanted that kind of, um, that very traditional, but also a voice that, that translates East and West. It's a voice that any any culture can listen to. It's warm and, and motherly in a, in a very idealistic way. Mm-hmm. Does it get easier the more films that you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it doesn't. That's, that's an excellent question. It should. I keep asking myself that very question. Uh, why isn't it easier? But, you know, the, the answer is um, that every, 
every film is is a new set of it's a new story to tell and a new set of problems about how to tell that story um, and there isn't an answer for all of these <laughs> for uh, for scoring a film there is no answer to how do I score a film it's all dependent on what the film is so you have to unravel you know the the you have to unwrap it, it every time and just um, you know as you as you kind of take things apart and and get into it there's just different problems and there's different solutions and then and that's just the story that's not even talking about all the political uh, the political puzzle that every uh, film, you know, environment is. So mm -hmm. each one is its own, you know, very different and very special project. And so you, you certainly, problem solving tools are really kind of the main trick in the composer's bag. But how you how you do that is different every time. Mm -hmm. And what did you take away from this film? Yes. Well, um, don't lose hope, <laughs> <laughs> because there were moments where we were pretty close to that. Um, it was a tough, it was a tough film to do, um, and I honestly, I don't, th I don't think any of us were sure that it was doable until we finally sat back as late as October and watched the film. Mm -hmm. uh, on spool in 3D before us, and and really knew then that that we had, you know, accomplished what we had we had hoped to in 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 giving credit to this this uh, you know beautiful but very unusual uh, book. So you know, it, it, I think that's something that that I really learned on this. I, I mean, I've worked probably longer on this than any other film, over a year or around a year at least. Um, and yeah, it, it was, uh, there were definitely moments where all of us felt uh, that we would never get there. But so yeah, just, you know, the little baby steps, the turtle uh, beating the rabbit and all <laughs> that, just, yeah, every day just chipping at it and you know, getting eventually you, you do get there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk with me and uh, pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Really nice uh, speaking with you.